Tonight is September 24th, 2013. So we want to welcome everyone to this evening's program. Okay, we're ready to uh, uh, talk about Arnold Haino. Uh, it uh, uh, is uh, that he is uh, moved to Laguna Beach in 1955 with his wife, uh, uh, Bonnie, and uh, been active. Well, let's hear it for Bonnie Haino. Bonnie, Yay! stand up. <laughs> Arnold uh, and Bonnie came to town, got involved, and... Uh, uh, what, what we have uh, is uh, the, the book, It Takes a Villager. Please read it. It goes through a history of this cause, that cause, the other cause. First, let's hear for Arnold Taino. <laughs> I, I, uh, I do have a question for you, Arnold. Uh, here's the book, It Takes a Villager. What, what is a villager? What is a villager? Yes, sir. Whatever you told me. Yeah. Can, can you hear me through this thing? Yes, okay. Uh, a, a, a villager is somebody who, who wants to keep Laguna Laguna. Uh, the, the other night at the, uh, at the Laguna County Conservancy, we heard uh, Steve Dictoro speak, and he, uh, he, he dodged and ducked the question of the uh, village entrance, but he spoke about himself and, and, and Laguna, and he said what he wants to do is to keep Laguna Laguna. And I thought, gee... Uh, right away, I've been plagiarized. I mean, that's something that I, I've been saying since 1960, something or other, and he stole my line. But uh, to keep Laguna Laguna is 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 really all that that there is to say about what a villager is. First, first, let me, t let me do a little aside about the title. Uh, it is a sidewise swipe at, at Hillary Clinton. Uh, she 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 wrote a book called "It Takes a Village to Raise a Child," and. Uh, having raised uh, three children, uh, I, I, she, you know, she's so wrong. You can't be, you know, she can't, you can't be wronger than that. Uh, if she means it helps to have the, uh, a, a cab to take you to the hospital, it takes a doctor to be in the hospital, it takes a, this and a that. Yes, we know that. But it takes parents to raise a child. And, and uh, uh, having raised three badly, I, I, I know how, diff <laughs> how, how difficult it is. Uh, and anyway... So, so I decided I'd call my book, It Takes a Villager, and somebody said, uh, well, what would a villager do? I said, well, to raise the roof, you know, not to raise the child, but to raise the roof. And Bonnie naturally went up to me. She said, it takes a villager to raise a ruckus. And uh, that's, that's, that's what we, we do. We raise a ruckus. We, we, uh, I was on a, a, a river cruise recently with Bonnie, and, and we made friends with a couple of people. And the second day, I was... Coming into the dining room, somebody said, here comes trouble. Uh, how did he know? How did he know so soon? Uh, anyway, uh, when Bonnie and I came to Laguna in, in 1955, uh, it, was, it was like a fresh of, 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 uh, it was a breath of fresh air. Uh, because we, we lived in New York for, for a few years. Bonnie comes from Sioux City, Iowa. Uh, the smell of the stockyards w was the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life when, when I went to visit Bonnie and Bonnie's mother there. Uh, so, so coming to Laguna was really, was really something special. It, it, uh, we, we did not know, we had never heard of Laguna Beach when we started out. We began in, in, in New York City uh, with a... Uh, a, our daughter, who was 17 months old, and our beagle puppy, who was six months old, in a 1955, brand new 1955 uh, Ford, and we, we just started out. We set out. We were going to go someplace to live rather than to live in New York City, because when Bonnie went to, to buy groceries, she'd have to leave Laurel in the, in the uh, stroller outside the grocery uh, uh, store uh, on Broadway, which was uh, akin to... Uh, to uh, Insanity. I mean, you, you, you just didn't do that. And so after a while, we decided, hey, this enough of this, uh, uh, the sharp elbowed crowd and all that, and we would go elsewhere. And uh, we tried, uh, uh, we went to Sioux City for a month. Uh, uh, I discovered when the temperature was 105 degrees that the coolest place in town was the barber shop because it was air conditioned. And so I had to shave every day. <laughs> it was wonderful. Uh, the, uh, 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 we stayed a month, and I wrote a book while I was there. And then we went to, um, to, to Santa Fe because we had friends living there. <clears throat> and that didn't say your home. 
<clears throat> so we continued. We went out to the valley where Bonnie's sister lived, and uh, she directed us how to get back on, on, the, uh, uh, on the coast highway, and we drove down to San Diego where we had other friends. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and uh, we passed Laguna on the way down. Uh, there, there was no freeway that would have taken you from L.A. to San Diego. It, it, it didn't happen. The 405 didn't exist. The, uh, uh, the 5 uh, uh, it kind of dribbled out around Tustin, became a dirt road someplace or other around there. Uh, so, so you go down the coast, and that's how you, you got to San Diego. And we passed this nice-looking little town. And when we got to San Diego, we said to these friends, Sam, w w what is that town we passed? He said, that was Laguna Beach, probably. And we said, yes, that's, I think that's what it was called. Uh, I said, is it expensive? And he said, no. He said, too many starving artists live there. So, so we, we came back up. And that day, September 1st, 1955, we went into the Chamber of Commerce and asked for a name of a, uh, a recommended name of a real estate person. They gave us a list of names, and we took the first one, uh, Helen Bailey. Fiery red hair, great figure. Uh, she she took us uh, and showed us a, a house on Goth Street. I had never lived in a house. I had lived only in apartment buildings. I had never lived in a house, and this was a an R1 house, and it it, it had three bedrooms and it had a, a nice backyard. And our dog loved it, and our daughter seemed to be content. Uh, we had driven across the country with the dog and the and 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 the child in a porta crib in the back side uh, in the back of the car alternately throwing up as we drove across the country uh, any, anyway uh, the, now now that that part was over and we could settle down and uh, uh, we we we've, we've been in laguna off and on ever since we spent uh, two years in the peace corps in, in 1991 uh, when i was in my 70th year and bonnie was in her 65th year and people say Gee, isn't there an age restriction? And we said, yes, you've got to be at least 18. Uh, so <laughs> so, so we, we did the two years, 91 to 93. In, 19, in 1993, the phone rang one day. We got a phone. It took 11 months to get a phone in Costa Rica. It took 11 months. Anyway, we had a phone, and uh, somebody on the, on the phone said, do you know that your town is burning? And so we both leaped out of our chairs and we stared at each other, and we sat back down again. Uh, what were we going to do about our town burning? Uh, we just waited until we found out later that it didn't burn our house, and so there, we felt snobby about that. And, and we came back a, a few years later after, after we finished our tour. We built a house down there, and we lived there for a few more years, and I got, finally got homesick, and, uh, and my Spanish was never that good. Bonnie's was very good, and uh, I, I live off nuance, and there was no such thing as nuance. Although, I must say, I had a reputation in Costa Rica for telling jokes in Spanish. I do not know why. I couldn't speak Spanish. So that must have been the joke. I mean, <laughs> anyway, we, we, uh, we, we, we came back, and we've been back ever since, except for these occasional river cruises we take. So uh, when we got here to, to Laguna, uh, I did not know that, that the, that this town was a Republican town. It was. I, I'm a Democrat from way back. Uh, I'm sorry, Gene. Uh, uh, but it was three to one Republican back then. Uh, people, people don't realize how, how conservative California was back then. Uh, the Los Angeles Times was a dreadful newspaper. It was a right-wing conservative newspaper. Otis Chandler had not taken over as yet. And uh, uh, there was nothing to read. Uh, you, you could try the local papers, but they, they were run, basically they told you uh, uh, that a new shop had opened up or, 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 or something to that effect. So we, we, we took to entertaining ourselves by, by going to city council meetings. Uh, it seemed to be, the, the, it's always been the best show in town. Even then it was a pretty good show. Five, five guys, five good old guys, cigars, uh, sitting here, handing out variances and, 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 and yeses to, to every, uh, a developer who came along, and that, that was what it was. And I started to, I found the, the, uh, the lectern, and I found out that I could talk back to these people. And, and, and that was a surprise. I, I, didn't, I, I was not good at that in the beginning, I, I, but I learned the hard way, and, uh, and I did it, and I talked back, and once again, here comes trouble. Uh, so so uh, we, we found out that when we got here that uh, there had been a family like us, a Jewish family from, from I don't know where, but they were living in Laguna, and they fled one night. 
they fled because they had been hounded by uh, calls, uh, phone calls in the middle of the night, death threats, and so on. And Theodore Baer and his wife and kid or kids, I don't know how many, uh, just piled into a car and, and left, Teddy Bear. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't occur to Bonnie and me that, gosh, this, this is dangerous, this is anything. It just, okay, this is just another problem. We would, we would handle that, and we've handled that. Uh, uh, a couple of stories. Uh, uh, one day I was, early on, I was standing on Temple Hills, and there was a bulldozer that was tearing up the, the, the hillside to build more roads. And I was standing with a man named Ed Nofziger, uh, who was a cartoonist. And uh, Ed, slowly, slowly, he, we became friends. Slowly, his story came out. He had been uh, a conscientious objector in World War II. He, uh, his draft came up. His draft number came up. That's the way it was back then. And he appeared before his draft board. And he said, "No." I said, "I, I, I can't. I can't join." They were very nice to him. They said, well, you know, uh, uh, you can drive an ambulance, you can do something like that. And he said, no, if I did that, then I'd be uh, unleashing somebody else to kill for me. And he said, I, I, I can't get involved in this killing machine. I, can't, I just can't get involved. They said, join the Quakers, uh, 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 join the, the Unitarians. You know. He said, no, he said, that I, I'm not big on, on religion, and I'm not going to do that. He spent World War II in jail because he was a country editor's objector. And when he came out, he was a silent Democrat who, who, who was afraid of his own shadow. He just would not, could not uh, say anything in opposition. And he thought Bonnie and I were absolutely astounding because we, we, we didn't seem to care much about how other people felt if we said a, an unkind word about, about uh, a Republican uh, lawmaker. And there were five of them uh, running the city council giving away all these goodies. So that, that was one, one, one story. And I found that what I was doing was sort of picking up people, that, uh, people who, who were marginal, people who were not part of the mainstream. Uh, and uh, Ed Nofziger became a very good friend. And, and uh, uh, interestingly, his, his wife Irma was, part, was in the Playhouse. And she developed a very terrible cancer. She had an amputated leg, and she was, it was just terrible. And she, when she was dying, uh, Ed was sitting with her, and, and this, here's this guy who, who, who could not go into the army, could not do that. Uh, and uh, uh, it was apparent that she was not going to live very much longer, but she was in terrible, terrible pain. And so he asked, the, this is at Loma Linda Hospital, he asked the nurses to leave the room. They left the room. He unplugged her. And he, uh, she died within a few minutes. He plugged her back in again, called the nurses back. They knew exactly what he had done. He had killed. Uh, and with a, with a good reason, good cause, and I, I honor him for that, uh, Ed Nosica. He was a cartoonist, and uh, uh, he sold the very first animal cartoon uh, to the Saturday Evening Post. Uh, he, was, he was very good. Uh, nice guy, very bright guy, very funny when he finally would open up. Uh, I met all the cartoonists, the Phil and Frank Interlandi and uh, uh, John Dempsey and uh, Virgil Parch and uh, others. They, they, had a, they had a great routine. They would get up at 5 in the morning, each, each one individually, 5 in the morning, and have a little bite, and then they would do their work, whatever their work was, their assignment, and they'd be finished by... 10, 10.30, 11 in the morning, and they would then meet at the Ivy House, which was, which was the Lumberyard before it became uh, 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 the Lumberyard, then before that was what, the Cedar Creek, and then before that, I guess, was the Ivy House. Anyway, they would, they would sit there for the rest of the day getting drunk. Uh, and they, 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 that, it was a rather Id idyllic life for them. They, they had made all the money they were going to make that morning, and they could just spend it all for the rest of the afternoon uh, they did that every day, uh, and surprisingly, some of them lived. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, so that, that's, that's, uh, that's, that, that's Ed Nofziger. Uh, he, he remarried after, after Irma died, and then he, he fell down a flight of stairs in, in, in his old age, and he, he hit his head, and he died shortly thereafter. Uh, there, there, there was a woman we, we discovered later. I, I did not know of her. 
thing about women, women confide to women, and, and so they know what's going on. Men have to guess. It's, it's part of the, the, the ever going on war that exists, uh, the, real, the, re, the real war. Uh, the, uh, anyway, uh, and Matilda Lewis was a, a, a principal in, in, in Laguna Beach, in one of the schools, and uh, this is during the McCarthy period, and she, she was arrested for something or other, uh, and, and she, in a, she was tr asked whether she had ever handed out communist propaganda on the beach, and she said, no, of course not, and they charged her with perjury. This is what she had done. She'd gone to the beach one day, and there was a, an acquaintance of hers there, and Matilda Lewis had a book, and the, the friend said, what are you reading? So she handed her the book. It was a, a, a book of poetry by Langston Hughes, who was a communist. And uh, that became the, the uh, this woman snitched on her, and, uh, and, this, and she got charged with and convicted of perjury uh, for, for, for saying she had not handed out communist propaganda on the beach. Anyway, Matilda Lewis lost her job as a principal. She remained uh, uh, important with the Girl Scouts. Bonnie was involved with the Girl Scouts. She had a brownie troop and very soon. Anyway, so, so that's Matilda Lewis. Uh, 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 there was another friend we had in this McCarthy period, uh, in, uh, Lou Pollock. Did I t talk about that last time? I don't know if I did. Well, how many of you heard me do this thing two years ago in this room? One, two, three, four. If, uh, but I'd like you to say, uh, just shout out loud, you said that already, okay? <laughs> well, one, will you say that? Oh, thank you very much. A anyway, uh, Lou Pollock, when Bonnie and I came, Lou Pollock had already read my book, A Day in the Beaches. It had come out while we were on our trip. It came out, uh, we left in, in July or August. It came out in August, and somehow or other, it was in a bookstore, I guess, out here, and uh, Lou Pollock uh, had read it, and he admired it. In fact, he, had a, he was a friend of um, uh, Bing Crosby's, and, and Bing Crosby got Bing Crosby to read it, and Bing Crosby wanted to make a movie of it. Never happened, never happened. Anyway, uh, Lou Pollock was a writer. He, he was a screenwriter, a television writer, whose, whose writing suddenly dried up. They, he stopped getting uh, calls from, from producers, and, and uh, he was being blacklisted. And I learned how a blacklist worked. The, uh, we had a friend, Barbara Sultan, uh, uh, who was a secretary to Stanley Kramer. And what happened when somebody was being hired in Hollywood, anybody, anybody, uh, an actor, a, 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 a electrician, a clerk, anybody, that person had to, you had to call a phone number and, and say, is this person available? And she never, Barbara never knew who she was calling, but she would, she would get the name and she would call and say, is this person available? And they say, just a minute, there'd be a little pause and they would check some records, I guess, and then they come back and say, no, he's not available. That, that means you, ca you, you cannot hire him. He is, he is on, the, on the blacklist. If yes, he's available, then you can, you can hire him. Uh, and that's how the blacklist worked. And fascinating. Anyway, Lou Pollock uh, suddenly was, was one of those people who, was, who no longer could, could get a job. And he went for years without a job. And then one day the phone rang and, and somebody said, you know, you're Lou Pollock with an O. We, we thought you were Lou Pollock with an A-C-K, and uh, we're sorry about all of this, but uh, uh, it was a mistake. And so he got, he, he got hired by Hallmark to do a, 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 a story, a, a play. He got a nice fat check, received the check, and dropped dead on the street. Uh, and uh, so, so, so th those were killing days back then. It, 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 was, not, it, was, not, it was not fun. Uh, so anyway, uh, the um, the thing about Laguna, uh, keeping Laguna Laguna, is, is that it's not just the the look of the town. The, the town is this is a beautiful town. Uh, uh, we we have the beach, we have the hills, and it, it is it's in a just it's a glorious town. Uh, we have wonderful neighborhoods. We have a, a vibrant downtown, uh, and and we want to keep it that way. Uh, we, we don't want them to come along and slap a, a second story on every building in the downtown. That's, that's not what, what we who are villagers believe in. We, we think the, the Eschbach building, which is 
one story uh, is probably the nicest looking commercial building in, in, in the whole Southland. It's just a wonderful building. I imagine putting a second story on it. It, it. You can't do it. You just can't do it. There are second stories in, in, the, in the downtown, but they were, the developers would like to put second stories on every building in the downtown. They would like to, to, to do, because that's, that's where the money is, apparently. That's also where the congestion is. That's also where the poisoned air is. That's, that, that's something that, that we, we fight against. And so, so we, we, don't, we don't want them to, to, to turn Laguna into some, someplace else. Today, Bonnie and I drove out uh, to a doctor's appointment. And you go through Corona Del Mar. It's a lovely little town. It, it, is, it is the sign town of, of the world. I've never seen so many signs. I don't want to know that James B. Hare is a dentist, but I found out twice uh, today. There's the sign on there on, in front and the sign on the roof telling me that James B. Hare is a dentist. I don't need, I don't need to know that. I, I, that. That town has more signs, I think, per square inch than any town I can imagine. So it's, it's, it's a nice little town, too. It should have been a nice little town. It's not a nice little town. Anyway, uh, so that, that's what the villager does. He, he, he fights or he argues or he wants or he does whatever he can to keep the town the town. Uh, and, and it's the people in the town that, that help, help make it. it it's, uh, it's you people who, who've come here uh, that, that make it. And so uh, we, we, we don't... Uh, we don't know how to do it without you, and, and we will continue trying to do it with you. Uh, the, the, current, the current condition that exists today, the, the village entrance uh, situation, it's one of those... Now, this is a very, very weird uh, uh, fight that's going on. It, I, I never knew a fight that is so easily solved as this one. All they've got to do is say, OK, you're right, we, don't, we will not put a garage a four-level garage uh, at, at the village entrance. We will, we will put, it any, put it any place else. Put it out at Act 5. Put it under my armpit. I don't care where you put it. But uh, you, it, just get it out of there. And if they did that, the fight is over. It's all. It's the end of it. Instead, it's going to be dragged out. If you read uh, uh, Elizabeth Pearson's letter, the longest letter in the history of the Independent uh, that, that ran in last, last Friday's paper, uh, ran half a page and then two columns, and I think she, they, I think they ran out of paper. They would have, would have continued on. <laughs> a, 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 anyway, anyway, uh, uh, she, she, she's telling, talking about all the things that are going to go on: the, the conferences, the workshops, the, the meetings, the, the planning commission meetings. And uh, as she said at first that this, this uh, thing has been going on for close to three decades. And then later, she said, close to two decades. She, she lost 10 years in the process of writing this letter. I don't blame her. Uh, I, I lost 10 years in reading it. Uh, so and anyway, that, that, that's where we are with that thing. And it's, it's amazing. It's so much like the fight we had for uh, uh, to, to have a 36-foot height limit and to fight the high rise on the beaches that occurred in 1971. The, um, uh, the people who then who were opposed to, to, to our side uh, was the city council with uh, Dick Goldberg, who was the mayor of Laguna Beach and the president of the Chamber of Commerce at the same time. Uh, he and, and the rest of and two other members of the, of the council, the planning commission, uh, the board of uh, uh, realtors, the Chamber of Commerce, the uh, a hotel and motel owners association, the architects, all the builders in town, all, they all wanted to have these, these hotels that would be from uh, Broadway to Bluebird Canyon, uh, and a mile and an eighth of 10-story, 100 feet high uh, hotels, and with the very lax uh, uh, variance rule that we had in place at the time, uh, it could have been 100 feet, it could be 200 feet, it could be 1,000 feet, it could have been anything. They, they handed out variances the way you hand out uh, dog licenses. Uh, it was, it was, it was it, it, those are the people who opposed, who were, who were for doing that, for, for lousing up our, our, our uh, shorefront uh, with, because there's, there's money. You all have all that money from, from all, those, all those people and all the bed tax and all this and all that. And, and uh, the public, said no, and the public uh, voted, and 3,700 people voted 
no or voted yes for a 36-foot height limit, and um, uh, we won by three, three plus to one uh, vote. Uh, that's, what, that's what would happen now. If there were a vote right now on the village entrance, it would be, it would be a, a landslide a victory for our side as opposed to uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth's side. The, uh, and, and it's the same people today. It's the, it's the Chamber of Commerce. It's the, uh, it's the builders. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, the architects. Uh, uh, and uh, we just have to keep saying to them, sorry, we don't, we don't want to do it. We don't want to do it. And they're going to try to stretch it out. Uh, Bob Whalen at the city council meeting recently told us, he said, well, October 1st is this meeting, yes, but that's just the meeting to to have a design um, talked about, uh, but we're going to really have meetings and conferences and uh, it's going to go on and on and on and on. We're going to win, but it's going to be one of those attenuated uh, uh, discussions that doesn't have to be. It, 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 should, it, should, it should end now. Somebody should say to Elizabeth Pearson, look, this is foolish, dear one. Let's, let's just drop it now and, and get on with, with, the, with undergrounding, uh, doing the important things we have to do uh, in this town. Uh, the, the, the fight that, that has been fought, the fights that have been fought, uh, have established certain, certain things about, about Laguna. We are a, a town of modest dimensions. We are a town of human scale. We are a town where uh, Howard Dawson said, small is beautiful, and, and, and small is beautiful. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be large. Uh, and, uh, and we have a history. We, we began as with, with American uh, Indians, with the Native Americans living in caves in Laguna Beach. And then one summer, we had tents on, on the, on the uh, beach uh, where tent dwellers spent the summer, and that became a habit for a while. And after that, we had small beach bungalows, and we had craftsmen's cottages, and we've had small, modest uh, living, and uh, we had neighbors and, and, and neighborhoods that were modest, it, it was it was a it was and is a, a lovely experience to see the kind of growth that we've had in this town. It has been a growth without progress. Progress is the dirty word that, that we are all being accused of, of blocking. We, we are the naysayers. We are the the anti uh, uh, growth. Uh, we are the anti progress people. So be it. So we're anti progress. Big deal. Anyway, uh, the 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 fights that we were f that were fought. I think have have all been fought and, and they've been won. The uh, the council of, in 1968 passed an emergency ordinance to ban all dogs on the beaches, all dogs in every park, no 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 dog on leash or off leash any place in a park or beach. The theory being that if the if the uh, if the dogs were banned, the hippies who would come to town would have to leave to go elsewhere. You know that that's the way they they thought and, and think. Anyway, uh, we, we paraded the dogs. Uh, uh, I, I, I wrote one of the signs that it said, uh, dog is God spelled backwards. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, we had a man, uh, Dick Chalice, who had, a, uh, he had the art gallery, that the, the first and best, I think, art gallery that this town has had. It then became the Esther Wells Gallery, and it, it's, it's closed now. Uh, Dick Chalice, who's about my age, uh, which means he's almost. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for laughing, sweetie. <laughs> uh, the, um, uh, the, 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 uh, the dog fight was such that uh, it looked as though it would go on also forever because we were up in an uproar about it. And, 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 but Dick Chalice did not know what to do with, with this uh, with the people who were opposed to the council. He was getting people signing petitions, petition after petition after petition, and giving them to Dick Goldberg and, and the council, who would immediately smile and thank him and toss him in the round file. Uh, and one day I went home from one of those meetings, and I was thinking three words, recall referendum uh, initiative. I didn't know what they meant, but I knew that's what I'd learned in a civics class in high school, or grade school, or someplace or other. So I went to the library, and I looked it up in the California something or other book, and uh, I checked with the uh, city clerk, who was uh, Dorothy Musfeld, and, and got some information from her, and uh, learned that, that uh, what you do when you have a thing like this is you, you, you get a referendum, and you get signatures on a form 
and you get enough signatures, and uh, you can stop this thing from happening. So we did that, and we got a couple thousand signatures. It was not, it was not hard to get the signatures. But at the same time, it, we were not, it was not going to be an easy election to win. Uh, People like Bruce, Bruce Hopping, for instance, hates dogs on the beach, and, and he thinks they give diseases to, to, uh, to human beings and things like that. Anyway, strange. Uh, so, so we presented all those, all those petitions at a meeting, and we argued back and forth and back and forth, and finally I sent a note up saying to Dick Goldberg, call a 10-minute rec recess. And so he called a 10-minute recess, and I said to Pete Ostrander, who's one of the three council members, he was the dim-witted one. He was the the uh, the, uh, the architect. He was very, he was very very cute looking. He was an architect. He was very sweet. He didn't know he didn't know from anything. Anyway, uh, he he once built a he once built a house near the witch's house, and he said and he said, "Don't worry, it's going to look just like it's going to have the same style, the same." But it is the most hideous abortion of a house. It, it, it's so wrong. Anyway. So I said to Pete, I said, uh, suppose we, we compromise and have dogs on half the, in half the parks and, and dogs in the morning and dogs uh, in the evening on leash and things like that. I said, would that go? He said, I think so. So he suggested it to Goldberg, and Goldberg accepted that. And we had a, we had a compromise. It was a compromise that nobody liked. Uh, Ed Van Dusen was furious with me for, for, for caving in uh, that night. The next morning he called and thanked me. Um, but uh, that, that ended that fight. Uh, but we learned from that fight that we could fight. We learned that there were things you could do, and, and if it wasn't a referendum, then it was initiative. If it wasn't initiative, it was recall. We did them all. Uh, the, we did the 36-foot the, the, the height limit was an initiative. When we got rid of Ed Law, it was a recall. Uh, getting rid of Ed Law was, was kind of fun. Uh, he, 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 uh, he, he, he was... He was the most venomous of, of the three. He was he was he uh, he was a, a hairdresser, uh, a downtown hairdresser, and he didn't even have the good taste to be gay. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, so so so, so uh, he had, he he had, he had taken his wife on a junket. Uh, 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 there was going to be a meeting in Hawaii, beginning on a Monday, and so on a Friday he flew with his wife to Hawaii uh, on the house on on, on the city money, and. Uh, and so he was there, and, and everything that he spent uh, and she spent was, was all being repaid by the city. And uh, so I confronted him from, from the lectern. And I asked him about all these things, and it, he, sort of, he didn't seem to think it was anything. He said, yeah, I did that. I, yeah. and, and a lot of people seem to think it's okay to do that. It, it, that's what politicians do. So, so we, we, we tried to recall him. We had... We had that as one of the causes. He also fought the, uh, uh, the Green Belt. He hated the Green Belt idea. Hated it. And there was something else. Only, uh, something else. No, oh, you, you gave away the punchline. Also, he wanted to dynamite the caves where, where, the, where the kids uh, slept, but, but not while the kids were there. He was kind enough not. To, uh, <laughs> during the day, we, we would we wanted to dynamite all those caves so the kids wouldn't have a sleeping arrangement. So they'd have to again have to leave and take their dogs with them. Uh, so, so I remember going around, going around with the getting getting people to sign the petition. And this one man, he said, I, I said, well, he, he took the, his wife on this junket. Ah, oh, he everybody does that, and he he doesn't like the. Greenbelt, ah, the Jim Deli is crazy, ah, and, and, and who needs those dirty kids all the time? And I said, and he traps cats on his lawn. And he grabbed that paper and he signed it right away and, and wanted me out of his sight. He used to put traps on his yard, on, on his front, yard, front lawn, and trap cats. I don't know what he did with them after he trapped them. He probably just took them elsewhere and, and dumped them someplace. But, but that, that's, how, that's, how we, that's how we got him, that's how we got him uh, recalled. Uh, anyway, so, uh, <laughs> what, what else can we talk about? Uh, uh, the, the height. The height limit? Uh, the height limit. Okay, thank you. The, uh, uh, when, when, when Dick Goldberg introduced a, a new zone, a, a, a C-100 zone, a, 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 a 
condominium hotel zone up to 100 feet tall uh, on, on the beaches from Broadway to Bluebird Canyon, a mile and an eighth of hotels. Uh, uh, he, had, he had three votes. I don't remember now whether, whether Roy Holm and, and Charlie Boyd were on the council at that time. They may have been. They both, by the way, were Republicans in the beginning. They later, they later saw the light uh, and became Democrats. Uh, I think Dick Nixon did that to them. Uh, <laughs> any, anyway, anyway, the, uh, 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 the, the Planning Commission uh, was going to hear it. And Roger McElane, who was one of the people working to fight this thing, he made a, he made a model uh, of what this would look like. And he, he brought the model in. We had a sheet over it and put it on a table like that in front of the, the planning commission. And when it came up on the planning commission uh, agenda, we whisked the thing off. And there was what 100 foot tall hotels were going to look like uh, compared to the, the, the homes and even compared to the uh, Hotel Laguna, for instance. <laughs> a, a lot of this came about really because of what had happened with the Serpent Sand Hotel. It, the Serpent Sand Hotel was built in a 35-foot zone. You could, you, go, you could go 35 feet, and the hotel got themselves a 23-foot height variance, so it was 58 feet. And that, that galvanized a, a lot of us in, into thinking, gee, this, this ain't the way it's got to be. We can, we can do better than that. And so when it, when it came up, we thought we could stop this thing via the referendum route if they passed it, or we can stop it before it gets passed through the initiative, and the initiative would not deal with, with hotels or anything. It would deal with a 36-foot height limit all over town. There was no, no zone in Laguna above 35 feet. So a 36-foot height limit was allowing them to build as high as, the, as, as everything was in Laguna Beach. The highest you, you could be was 35 feet. So a 36-foot height limit was, was not bad. It was, it was a kind of brilliant idea, not mine. Uh, 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 Ralph Benson uh, came up with the number. And he said, that, that, that'll work. Ralph Benson, in fact, had said to me when we wanted to do the initiative, he said, you know, you're not allowed to use the initiative to rezone anything. The, 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 the law doesn't allow it. So I said, we have a zoning code and we have a municipal building code. Isn't there anything in the municipal building code that would allow us to do it? He brightened at that, came back the next day, and he said, yes, there's a, there's a section on mass and scale of buildings, and if you want to add to that, uh, height and think you can probably get away with that, and which is what we did do. Uh, later on, uh, uh, after we, we had won that fight, uh, and we had won that fight easily, again, we, uh, we, we didn't have to do very much. We didn't spend much money. The, the largest check we received was a $500 check from uh, uh, Larry Overstad. It was written out to, to is he here? He is here. Good. Here's a hit for Larry Overstand. Uh, he, 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 had, he had written it uh, and addressed it to John Brand, who was on our committee. Uh, but John Brand wasn't coming to meetings. And so it just sat there for two or three weeks, just sitting there, this, this envelope. Finally, one day, we opened it up, $500. Wow. And, and uh, that really made, that made a huge difference. Uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't spend much money. Uh, uh, I don't know what else we had. A mailing or two, I guess, but the, uh, I remember the, the, on election day, or the, the weekend before election day, uh, we had met and there had been the news post, Vernon Spitalari's news post had, had been venomous about, about this whole thing, and they, they had taken out, pulled, pulled out uh, uh, all stops, and, they, and they, they really blasted us in the last weekend. And we had a meeting on the Saturday or Sunday, and we said, what do we do? Do we answer it? And the, and the feeling was first, yeah, we can answer. We can give out uh, flyers to people who go to church on Sunday and, you know, that sort of. And then I asked the simple question. I said, do you think we're going to win? Everywhere in the room knew we were going to win. I, and I said, by how, how much we, are we going to win? Well, some thought two to one, some thought five to one. It seemed like we were going to win, they thought, around three to one. And so we, didn't need, we never even answered that, that, that last bunch of nonsense from, from the news post. And on election day, uh, Bonnie wasn't around, by the way, for all of this. She, uh, she, she was studying Spanish, and she was living for a month in Guadalajara uh, with a family going to school down there, uh, taking Spanish. 
And so she was, she was, she was lucky. She missed all, all this crap that was going on. Anyway. Uh, uh, Arnold, uh, the, the one point that, that uh, I, I find interesting is when you bring in the initiative, you didn't want the election. When you bring in all these petitions to the city council yes. uh, in the initiative process, they can accept it. If they accept it, that, that, that ends the whole thing. Or they can fight it and have an election, which is going to cost $10,000 or whatever it's going to cost. So it's, it's up to them. And that, that's what they chose to do. They chose to have the election. And I think maybe, maybe I, thought, I think they thought in the beginning they could stop us. But uh, on, on election day, let's say the polls closed at 70, 7 or 8, I don't know, but let's say it was 7. I then rushed off to the first polling place that was nearby, and I left, watched, you know, they counted ballots right there at, at, at the polling places. And they, I watched them count 10 ballots in, at this one place, and it was 7-3. And they, I went to another one, it was 6-4. I went to another one, it was 8-2. And so it was like running 20-something to 8, uh, running not quite 3 to 1. And so I knew we, I knew, I knew we had won. I've told this before. I said I went home and I fixed myself a martini, and I toasted myself. And, and, <laughs> uh, and th then, then it, it came in 3,700 and something to 1,200 and something. It, Six, seventy, seventy, uh, uh, six percent. Uh, in, in an election in, on August third, when no sensible person is in Laguna Beach, uh, it had a sixty-two percent uh, uh, turnout, uh, which was which is like presidential size turnouts, uh, uh, and uh, and we won. With the head, uh, the story in the Times the next day had had it. It was below the, the fold, but it was on the first page. Uh, Laguna voters uh, turned down t tall buildings, something like that, that was, was what they called it. And uh, I got phone calls, uh, got a phone call from, from Florida. Somebody there had, had a, there was a city there, they wanted to do something like that. I got phone calls from Huntington Beach and other places around us. They wanted to know how they, how they could do it and so on. Anyway, that, 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 uh, that helped to establish the, the Village Laguna in this town. Uh, we were uh, it, 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 the yes on August third committee uh, morphed into Village Laguna uh, and and has been the uh, the stalwart uh, organization taking up this fight. Uh, we we are the famous to them naysayers and uh, and yeah we say nay we say nay to a high rise on the beach uh, we say nay to a, to a four four level. Uh, Garage, a four-level garage in the so-called village village entrance. The village entrance is such a misnomer. Uh, we we have three entrances to Laguna Beach. One at the north end of town, let's say around, uh, oh, just south of of, of, uh, of Crystal Cove, and then we have one at the at the south end of town below uh, Three Arch Bay. Then we should, if we're going to have one in the canyon, it'd be around Annalisa. It'd be around uh, El Toro Road and 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 the. Uh, uh, and, and the, the Canyon Road, uh, but uh, to call that the village entrance, that that means the Laguna Resource Center, where they welcome the, the homeless, and the French shelter, where they put the homeless to bed, and and uh, the Laguna College of Art and Design wouldn't be in Laguna; it would be someplace else. If this is if this is the village entrance, if this is where Laguna begins. Uh, the um, uh, the, 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 saw, the sawdust would not be in. The wonderful people who live on Roosevelt Lane, how many people have, have never walked the, 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 the length of Roosevelt Lane? How many, anybody? You've all walked it. You, you know what, that, that's glorious. I mean, that's, where the, that's where the villages are. Anyway, um, so, so that's who we are and what we've done, and this is who I am and what I've done, and uh, I, I thank you for allowing me to bore you. Uh, I have some more topics for Arnold Taino, but let's hear for Arnold Taino. Um, I was wondering if you want to comment on Bluebird Park and the uh, development of that. I don't think you covered that last time. The uh, 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 up, up of Bluebird and and three Arch and and Arch Beach Heights were not in Laguna Beach uh, until the 19 around 1965, I guess it was. Uh, and uh, uh, I remember when I forget who the who the, uh, who the uh, 
it was Al Field or somebody came came by to to tell us in, in Laguna Beach in in Blueberry Canyon what this what it would mean to come into the city. And Mary Zava, who was our nearest neighbor, we had moved from Goth Street to a house on on. Uh, East Jefferson Way. There was no West Jefferson Way, no North, no South. I don't know why it was East Jefferson Way. They've gotten rid of the East. Now it's called just Jefferson Way. Anyway, Mary and Bob Zava and their, and their horse lived there. They were, the horse was our nearest neighbor. Uh, I remember once we moved from there to another place where, where the four nuns from the, from the Catholic, college, Catholic uh, uh, Church were waiting for the convent to be built. And so we, we had swapped... Uh, my nearest neighbor had been a horse, now it was a nun. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I wrote a magazine article on that, and, and I wanted to title it that, but we didn't. Uh, anyway, uh, so Al Theo came, and, and he, he said, we're going to have all these good things. And Mary Zava, who lived in a little house on Jefferson Way on, on a gravel road, uh, she said, um, how about streetlights? He said, oh, he said, yes. He want, no, she said, I don't want streetlights. Can, can we have no streetlights on, on this street? He said, oh, of course. He was terrified of her. <laughs> of course. He, so so, so, so they, they were, that election was an easy election of, of, of bringing them into the city. There was this business of being, um, oh, sounding off the way I do and the way I did. You, you've got to get your money where your mouth is sometime or other. And at, at one point, uh, Dick Goldberg wanted to make the city bigger, uh, you know, big and, and grow and progress. Well, these, these were the big words. And so they, they, they spent, I think, $15,000. They hired a, a planning consulting firm to, uh, to build, uh, uh, to, to get, tell us how big we could make the city. How, how, how we were then about... I think maybe we were 14,000. It might have been as many as 14,000 by then. And, uh, uh, and they, so they, they took the $15,000 and they, they came back and they, they said, yes, we can, we, can get, we can stretch it up where you, by build out time, you'll have 35,000 people in Laguna Beach. And I went to my favorite spot and I said, I don't think so. I don't think that's what we want. We don't want 35,000 people. We can do better with a smaller number, you can do better, show us. So that, that's all they, that they had to say to us. And so we went out and we worked on zoning and, and, and all that sort of stuff. And we came back with something that, that said, we can grow, we can hold this town, town down to about 18,500 people. And we presented it to the city council and they presented it to the planning commission and they settled on 20,000. 20, this, was, this was before uh, South Laguna. So, so that that became. It's, these are useless things. These resolutions. That, that that was that's what they were going to do. They're going to have a build out at around twenty thousand people. It, it the build out depends on the current city council, and whatever it is, that's what they will decide. But that council reluctantly agreed to a twenty thousand build out number. So uh, we learned that that uh, we can do it too. Besides uh, saying it, we can do it. Uh, I, I wrote something in. in in the Village Laguna newsletter describing Village Laguna, and I said, we are the movers and shakers, not the watchers and waiters. We are doers. The sidelines are for other folks. And uh, uh, that's been sort of my, my mantra uh, ever since. Uh, if somebody would like to ask a question or bring up a topic, come here to the podium. Otherwise, I'm going to go through my list here. Were you talking about a development I understand at one time to give uh, folks directions to your home, it was difficult until uh, Rancho Laguna put up their sign. And uh, maybe people would like to know the scope of the original Rancho Laguna uh, development. The Rancho Laguna development, I don't know that I can answer that. Uh, I, can, I can tell you about the development that they wanted to put above... Uh, uh, Morningside, Morningside Drive, Morningside. right. That's what I'm trying to okay, refer the, to. The, the Mog Gumbinder project was going to put up 720 units. A unit is a house. Uh, and 720 houses above Morningside uh, Drive. Uh, Morningside Drive is off of Bluebird Canyon. What is that, El Rancho? Uh, uh. Well, it, 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 when, when you go up to the top uh, of, of Bluebird Canyon, Bluebird Canyon occurs uh, just short of Morningside. And Morningside is the, outs the outskirt of it, the, the, the farthermost part of upper Bluebird. 
and it swings all the way around to Rancho Laguna. And, and uh, uh, you know, this, we have a box canyon, and this, this is, this is the, the box canyon that I'm describing, and you, you, you can go in and out only one way. And so uh, they, Gumbiner wanted to put up 720 houses. Bonnie and I only heard about it one day. Somebody came to the house. Uh, was it, was it, it wasn't Joe Tomchak. It was Joe Tomchak. Joe, Joe Tomchak, who was on the planning commission, came by. Yes, he said, there'll be a meeting tonight, I guess it was, uh, uh, on, on hearing this thing. That, that, in those days, no, there was no noticing. Uh, they were, the, the, council, the, the council tells the planning commission, the planning commission is going to do it. it, it it's a giveaway. Uh, and so we, so we went, Bonnie and I, and uh, Ber Bernie Luskin, who was a neighbor, we, we went to, to, the, to the meeting of the planning, of the planning commission, and we raised a, we raised a ruckus. We, we said, no, you haven't noticed it. You haven't told anybody about it. You can't do it. You have, uh, they got to hold off, and so they agreed to hold off for a week, and we filled the, the room the next week. Uh, and when they voted, they voted it down. And they, the owners came back, Gumbiner or whoever it was, came back with, instead of 700 and something, they came back with 280. That seemed like a very reasonable, they, they thought that was so reasonable, and, and that got turned down. They came back with 80, and that got turned down, and they, they gave up, and they said to the city, buy it. And the city bought that land for six hundred thousand dollars, one hundred and twenty acres for for, for six hundred thousand dollars, and it's perpetual open space. So, so that that's something that Bonnie and I and Bernie Luskin and a couple of other people did. We you know it's you can do it if if, if you if you if you want to stick out your chin and, and take a couple, you, you can do it. And, and well, we know, we got we got them to the meeting. Uh, please, no disagreement with the speaker. <laughs> no, no, well, oh. uh, 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 Arnold, when I mentioned Bluebird Park, one, one of your columns uh, uh, talking about uh, the natural water course and the Bluebird Canyon area, where Bluebird Park is right now, was mm -hmm. a great place for kids to play. Yes. Uh, and then uh, uh, the ladies uh, uh, got the park uh, developed, and uh, in the beginning it was all dirt. It was all dirt and, and, and rattlesnakes and, and, and other good things. It was, it was kind of a fun place. Uh, and uh, our daughter, for instance, once challenged by somebody, rode her bike down the, the cliff from, from the very end of Bluebird Canyon, broke her hand in the process. You know, it, it, it was really neat. <laughs> uh, but I, 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 I like to go into Bluebird Park, and I like to hear the kids. It, it is a lovely, light-hearted place to be. I, I saw I saw Kimberly with with her son there. Uh, I've seen other people with, with their kids there. Bonnie even went up uh, uh, the, the the rocket ship and came came down. Uh, it, it, it's 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 a it's a delightful place. It's it's, a, it's the only children's park in Laguna, and it is a truly children's children's park. It, now, what's the deal with the croquet hoops? Are what? they still there? Were there large croquet hoops? <laughs> I don't know. Read about it in, in the book. Okay, well, that, that, uh, that, that is true, what, what, what Gene is saying about me. My, my memory is now a sieve. I read the book and I'm discovering things I did not know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's right. That's right. I'm also discovering things that shouldn't be in the book. Uh, uh, we're recording this, so we'd appreciate you coming up to the microphone. Uh, and just wait, we'll go over one thing. Uh, do you want to comment? No, go ahead and stand there. Uh, uh, we, we want to keep this moving along. Uh, uh, I, have a, I have a dim memory, uh, Arnold, of, a, uh, okay. of um, a fight over putting a freeway right through the middle oh, of town. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 and that was before 68. It was in the early 60s, I guess. That, that, was, that was in the, in the Can you late come? 50s, early 60s where, Can they, you? where they did that. They, they wanted the, the, the California Division of Highways, was the, was, was the name of the, the department, wanted to put a freeway through, right through, right down a, a Coast Highway. Coast Highway, by the way, we didn't call it Coast Highway. We called it we called it the Boulevard, and just to just to put a freeway down the Boulevard, uh, where we like to walk and shop and 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 eat, uh, uh, it was just 
It was just dreadful. And that went on for, that fight went on for probably three years, four years. Uh, they, they never did it. I think, I think, I don't know that we won the fight or whether they just didn't have the money. I, I think they, it, the longer you can stretch these things out, the more it's going to cost. And, and so that's another thing that's, that's crazy about, about uh, the current thing with, with Elizabeth and, and Bob Whelan. The more they stretch it out, the more, the more that 42.3 million starts to uh, reach its, its proper the, the size, which is 65 to 80 million uh, for sure. Bit, anyway. bit by bit, it will add up to real money. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so so that, was, that was one fight. Another fight way back then was, was my boss, Bud Desenberg, at, at the Laguna Beach Post. He wanted to have a... He was, he's, he's from Corona del Mar on Newport Beach. He wanted a, a, to turn our beachfront into a marina. Uh, he, he, was, he, was big on, he was big on yachting caps. He just thought they, you know, they were so smart. And... Anyway, so uh, you mentioned Duesenberg, so we might explain that. So you you um, uh, were writing a column under, uh, under a different name. name. Under, under, yes, well, I, I was first. I was first. I was writing the uh, play reviews. Phil Interlandi was writing the play reviews, and one day he called me, oh, middle of the week, and said, "I can't get to the opening on Friday of, of this kind of a, a wannabe uh, a Neil Simon kind of comedy." He said, could you write the review? I said, I've never written a review of a play. He said, it's easy. He said, you just like everything. You like, you like the people. <laughs> yeah, you like the people. You like the play. You like the... And so I, uh, uh, Bonnie spotted immediately that there was a code. Uh, and you'd say, uh, uh, the ingenue is certainly uh, seems to be quite seasoned for the job. That means she was 60 years old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, uh, yeah, so, so, so I said... You don't, want to do, you don't want to do this review, do you? He said, he said, he said, he said I wouldn't be caught dead watching that piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> now, now, will that get past the, the television? Uh, anyway, anyway, so I went, and I, and I liked everybody, and, 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 I, uh, and I, so I, I became the, the play reviewer, and I did that for two or three years, I guess. And one day I said to Bud Desenberg, I, uh, I'd like to do a column. Is this for the Post? The Laguna Beach Post, owned by Desenberg and John Weld. John Weld wrote, wrote a column for the, for the paper, and he also had the Ford dealership. We had, we had more than one automobile dealership in Laguna at the time. Uh, I, there was a, I think Phillips had the Buick one. I think there were two or three. Anyway, so uh, he said, no, he said, I, you can't, you're too much trouble. I was, I was you know, trouble. I, I was controversial. So, so I said, well, I, I can do it under a pseudonym. Oh, he brightened up with that. I guess he had not thought of that. So I became Woody Cove, and I, I wrote uh, uh, Hello There Woody, uh, by Woody Cove for, for close to four years, I guess, 1961 into 1964. And uh, it, it, uh, the first, uh, Betsy Rose was the editor. Only, only De Bud and Betsy Rose and Bonnie and I knew who, was, who Woody Cove was. Nobody else knew. And... Uh, uh, but then, the, then Betsy entered my column in the uh, in the uh, press club, uh, the, the Orange County Press Club award annual award dinner or whatever it was, under my name. Instead of she didn't check with me, she did it under my name, and it won first prize for best column by a left-handed writer between uh, Newport Beach and and and, and you know. Yeah, anyway, anyway, I won. And, and there was problems because uh, her column was uh, People, Places, and Things or something well, like well, that? Well, Sally Reeve uh, had a column called People's Places and Things, which I said doesn't leave anything for the rest of us. But, but I, 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 like, I like Sally Reeve. One, one day, what, what was it when she, 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 lost, she lost something? Yes. It ended up crap instead of a... a, a oh, they, yes, they, let's they see. What is scrap, it? The word scrap was in w there. There so was like, a correction. They left the S out, and it became crap. And, and uh, 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 poor Sally. She said, she's, she, she's, so do you, she's still around, Sally and uh, Doug. They're still around. Very, very lovely people. So she, she wrote uh, a column instead of scrapbook. It said crap book. That's right. But in the correction, they made another error. <laughs> which yeah. uh, you'll have to come back to a future program to find out what it was because yeah. we can't remember. Because I cannot remember. No. no, no, no. no. Is it in your book? 
What's it that? is. It is in the book. Oh yes, it's yes. in the book. Yes. Oh, 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 the, 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 the book. The book tells all. It's <laughs> so what? What about Main Beach Park? Do you? What are your comments on that? Main Beach Park. Uh, in 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 Elizabeth's letter uh, in the last week, she mentions the Beautification Council and how how they had a dream of having a park at Main Beach uh, uh, and and how finally after two elections had failed. Uh, there was a revenue bond, et cetera, et cetera, and they were finally able to do it. Not a word mentioned of the village Laguna fighting that fight to keep the high rise. If, if we had not fought that fight, there would have been a high rise building right there, and there would have been no Main Beach Park. Main Beach Park would not exist today. Uh, so, 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 you know, talk about the distorted history. Uh, she, just, she just fails there. Well, the the, uh, the city purchased uh, the thousand acre, uh, thousand feet of uh, oceanfront for over a little bit over three million dollars in 1968, and after that, there were some plans uh, for some uh, significant development uh, on 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 the beach. Right on Main Beach, but in any event, 1974 was the opening of uh, Main Beach. Right, 74, 75, something like that. Yes, but I I don't I don't. I, I do know that when the bulldozer came to knock off the buildings that were there, uh, uh, Dick Goldberg said to me, I wish, you, I wish you were in front of one of those bulldozers. <laughs> 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 well, that, that's okay. The, the poor guy, I mean, he, he and his wife had a, a department store out at, out at uh, uh, Bow Canyon, and it was, it was a lovely little department store, and, and they, they failed. And then he had, a, he had a seafood restaurant right on the ocean, and it failed. The, the, the man was a schlemiel. He, 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 uh, he, he could not, he could not, uh, he president of the Board of Chamber of Commerce, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't handle a simple little business. Terrible, terrible. Anyway, and, and, and the poor guy, I, I've mentioned this one time, he, he had ulcers, and, and he would take some kind of pill or other, and he would bubble, little white bubbles, uh, <laughs> when he would talk. <laughs> uh, poor guy. Uh, he, I, he, went, he, went, I don't know, he went to, went to Hawaii with his wife. That was very smart of him. And he, yeah, that's, that's a nice life. We put in this recent newsletter the uh, Chateau and the Casa Mandingo. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is important to us because the Murphy Smith bungalow was purchased about the same time that these two buildings were purchased. And the idea was to demolish them to expand the, the uh, Laguna Federal Savings. Laguna Federal Savings uh, along one parking lot. Bigger, bigger parking lot. And there were two buildings. There was the Casa de Mandingo, which had 14 apartments, seven and seven, or two stories. And the other was the Barbara Webber uh, Dance Studio, and uh, uh, and they got they immediately got a d demolition permit. Getting a demolition permit is is as easy as getting pie. I mean, they 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 just hand them out to anybody. You, you, that they love to demolish things in this town. Buy bodies on that heritage committee. It's it's got to be the the most difficult job in the entire world to fight off these people who who think that oh it's old get rid of it. You know. It, it, here I am, you know. <laughs> oh, this is, get rid of them, you know. It's like uh, 75 or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, I was on the board of, I, I'd gotten a phone call from Roy Holm one day saying, congratulations, you're on the board of adjustment. I said, what is the board of adjustment? I'd never heard of it. Uh, he said, you'll find out. So uh, <laughs> they, 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 there were three seats on the board of adjustment, and I guess the three people had either quit or been fired or something, and uh, the council had, a tr had, a, had to fill those seats, and uh, Goldberg wanted Chris, a no, no, I guess Pete Ostrander wanted Chris Abel, architect wanting an architect, uh, Ed Law wanted uh, Milt Hansen, he was a real estate agent, v very funny man, I, I loved him, he was funny, uh, and, and, uh, and then uh, Roy Holmes said, uh, Arnold Hano. And Ed Law went berserk and said, you can't have him on there, blah, blah, blah. And, and Goldberg said, three seats, three, uh, three names, that's, that's the board. So, so Roy Holm called me the next morning and said, hey, you're on the board. And, and that board became eventually the first design review board uh, in Orange County. And uh, on my last meeting in 1973, uh, in September of 1973, I, I left. Uh, 
we had we had problems. Our daughter had been ill, had had an injury, and and, and it was getting to be too much, and so I, I had to quit. So but, so on that last meeting, uh, I I said, why don't we uh, declare these two buildings historic buildings? We had no, there was no historic uh, preservation committee, nothing like that in town, and. The, the board went along with me and said, sure, okay, we'll call them historic buildings. And so uh, I went to the city council and said, look, we, we, we don't want to have these buildings destroyed. They're historic. And they said, oh, you know, who are you kidding? And, uh, uh, and so it had, to, it had, for some reason, it had to go to the, to the Coastal Commission. So Mary Miller and I drove up to Santa Barbara. That's where the Coastal Commission was meeting. And we were met at the at the door of the Coastal Commission building by somebody on staff who said, you know, he said, it's good you're here, but the, the, the staff has decided against your, your, your application that they'll, 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 you won't be able to stop the demolition. Uh, I had nothing else to do but to talk, so I stood up at the Coastal Commission and I talked for five minutes and, and they agreed with me and they, they, they said, we'll give you six months to, to, to get somebody to take those buildings, move those buildings, do something. And so for a buck each, uh, Rick Balls had bought the, the Barbara Webber studio and, and Mark Dumbine had bought the, uh, the Casa de Menigo building for a buck. And I went through the, the yellow pages and found a, 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 a building mover. I, I, I didn't know how to move a building. I didn't know what he did, but I looked the yellow pages and I found an ABC one, so, which was the first one, called them. And I described it, and they said, yeah, that would be about $5,000 for a building. So I told Balzer and, and, and Mark Gumbiner that was okay with them. Uh, and they moved them uh, one, one, one weekend and the other the next weekend. Uh, today, the, uh, the Mark Gumbiner building is the Royal Thai building on Coast Highway, the restaurant. And the, uh, uh, the, the other building is the Orthodontia building on Glenary between uh, 1100 and something between. It's at uh, 1166 Glenary Street, and it's referred to as the Chateau with that kind of French uh, uh, architecture, and it's in uh, Karen Wilson Turnbull's book, uh, The Cottages and Castles of, uh, of Laguna Beach. Uh, the Royal Thai Restaurant is near Mozambique, and it's at 1750 uh, South Coast Highway, so they're both uh, preserved. Yes, and I, and I think probably. What, what would what would the Royal Thai be worth today, sitting on on the coastline? Four million dollars. So, so for a buck plus the moving fees, four million dollar thing. So and 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 they and they say that we people in Village Lagoon don't know a thing about money. <laughs> so there. Uh, and, and anyway, uh, and, and the, the that that uh, that chateau building is, I think, the best looking commercial building outside of the downtown. Uh, Arnold, uh, there, there was uh, the first mayor of uh, Laguna Beach was uh, a, a female, uh, was Phyllis Sweeney, and there was a, a councilwoman prior to her. Uh, Helen Keeley was on the council before that. Helen Keeley was a, is a dear woman uh, here. She was six feet tall. That, so for one thing, she, she kept the boys in, 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 in their place. Uh, she, um, she was a very good city council person, and... and the boys in their place were not going to let her be mayor, though. That's one thing they, they were not going to allow her to be. Uh, she's, by the way, still alive. She's 100 now, 100, 101. So anyway, uh, uh, H Helen Keeley was, was uh, the person that I contacted. One day I'm driving through the canyon, and suddenly there are two billboards. You know, my, my hatred of, of James B. Hare, dentist. Well, here are these two billboards advertising... Uh, uh, a new new place called Leisure World, uh, signed by Ross Cortese at the bottom. Uh, the billboards were 40 feet by 10 feet, so that's 400 square feet of billboard space. And uh, <coughs> when I saw them, I was I was stunned. They'd gone up overnight practically, and I did not expect it. And and I didn't know why it so bothered me. And I realized I'm looking up at them, uh, and I had lost that whole feeling of human scale, of, of eye to eye, of the smallish of the design. And here was this thing way up there, these two things way up there. And so I called Helen Keeley. I said, how can we stop this thing? How can we get rid of these, these monsters? And she called back later and said, 
she can't, we can't, because it's not in Laguna Beach, it's in, it's in the county. One of them was in a cemetery zone. Uh, so I thought that was proper uh, <laughs> for, for, for old people. <laughs> uh, any, anyway, anyway, I wrote a column about it. It's, 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 in, the, it's in the book, and I, I, I described how I felt about it, and I described that, that I thought it was uh, unsafe. It's when you drive back, there were lights on it at night, and, and uh, the, the column came out, let's say, on, on Friday. On Saturday, the billboards were down. They just took them down. Like that. that was the first time I realized there was some power in this the environmental stuff that, that you, and, and in writing. And you could, you could have, you could, you could, you could be important. You could have some, some, some say. And so uh, that, that was, that was, that was one of, one of the most important things that, ha that happened to me. Uh, I also was involved in, in one other fight, and I've mentioned it before, Goldberg one day read off the names of three more people who were being a, a, a appointed to boards, to a, a, this agency, that agency. That, and I, I was sitting there back where, oh, well, may halfway back, and I thought, counting on my fingers, I said, I think that's about 16 or 17 appointments in a row, all men. So I got up to the lectern and I, and I said, you just made three more appointments, and I think You've now run 16 men in a row. Wasn't there a, a single woman, or a married woman, wasn't there a single woman who could have done one of those jobs? And Ed Law actually said, as a matter of fact, there was one woman I thought of, but she moved to Arizona. And I, 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 I said, so, so the only woman in, in, in Laguna who could do it was no longer in Laguna. She was not even in the state. And, and, and so... I, I left it at that, and I didn't, make, I didn't make a phone call, but the next morning, somebody from the Fair Employment Practices Commission w from Santa Ana was in City Hall uh, and saying, what is this? We understand you've had all these appointments. Blah, blah. And after that, women started getting appointed. And I, I think that was about as important a thing as I, as I did during all, all those years. And, and fellow Sweeney, how, who did she replace on the council? Remember, uh, but Carl, she joined uh, Charlie Boyd and uh, Home Roy Home. I think she was on that one, and she. And then Carl Johnson was on it. Carl Johnson. But after we recalled, after we recalled Ed Law, there was an election to fill that spot, and that was Carl Johnson. We we we, we recommended him, and he got elected. And then we, that's when we also discovered that we could gee, we could get people elected, uh, and we could start to replace some of these hideous people. And so so it went. Uh, I don't know Phyllis. How th Phyllis was a real estate broker, and so she was not. She was an easier to sell uh, because I think they thought that she would once in a while vote their way, and she did once in a while vote their way. But she was she was very good. You know, Phyllis is not well. Phyllis is is uh, yeah. barely holding on. What was the organization Carl Johnson was so involved with? The league, uh, Civic League. Civic League. He could have been Civic League. There, there, was an inst there was one institution in Laguna uh, that, was, um, uh, that was on our side, but they were, it was uh, the Dimitriades, uh, Donna Dimitriades, and what was his name? Uh, anyway, uh, but they were, they were afraid of their shadow. Uh, they were so terrified during the high-rise fight that I was going to say something wrong or do something, or we were going to do something wrong, and, and we'd all go down in a big fiery crash, and... Uh, but they, they, were nice, they were nice people. They were, they were just terrified. Uh, we, we had a lot of people in the closet of, di of different ways, uh, like Democrats in the closet, uh, gays in the closet. Uh, uh, Bob Gentry, uh, was, was for, for all his reputation as the first avowedly gay uh, mayor of any city, uh, and the, he was in the closet for a while. If he, his first term, uh, he, he was elected... No Nobody, we all knew, but nobody officially knew that he was gay. And then he, had, then he announced after he had been elected. Uh, yeah, so what, what else? Um, the, the, the 2011 uh, um, program, you mentioned that you blew the uh, answer to the question of your hero. Of my what? Of my heroes. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, Two years ago, when I was when I was here, I, I pooped out early on, as I'm pooping out today. I, I didn't have my, my nap today, you guys. I mean, you're, you're getting me, your boy. 
Anyway, uh, I was asked about, about my heroes, and I, I think I bumbled it, bumbled it. And then uh, when I got home, I thought more about it, and I thought Bob Gentry, Jim, Jim Dilley, they're, they're the easy ones. They're, they're, that's, 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 you know, that's easy. But the name Mary Gray kept nudging into my head, and I did not know this about her in the beginning. Bonnie knew about it. Uh, but Mary Gray had, had, had run a, an underground railway stop for, for young women who had gone to Mexico for their abortions. Abortion was illegal at the time. And coming back battered and bruised and bleeding sometimes, they had a, they had a house to stay in. Uh, at, and the, the Mary Gray house, Fitzhugh Mary Gray's house, was just south of where the montage is now. It was, it was the house on the ocean side, uh, the f first house just below the montage. And anyway, she would take in uh, the, these these uh, young women, sometimes some girls really, some of them were in their 16, 17 year olds, uh, and bed them and nurse them and feed them and counsel them and, and let them know that they were, they were okay uh, and send them back home or wh wherever they went. And she, she became my hero. And I... It, the next to last column in, in the book is, is about Mary Gray, and it's, I think it's one of my favorite columns in the book. Uh, more questions, answers. Come right back there. Arnold and Clary Mines have been thinking about this question for years. <laughs> I remember, I will never forget the evening that the phone rang and you were on the other other end of it you were looking for someone to be a treasurer for your city council run uh -huh. and um, of course I said yes because I couldn't imagine anything more fun <laughs> than you doing that the question is though from from that whole experience did that sharpen your views about being an outsider rather than an insider? Well, when, when you lose an election, uh, you, you have no choice. You are now an outsider. Uh, and, I, and I think I found that I was more relaxed and happier at that than I might have been had I been elected. But people say, they asked me at the last at the meeting two years ago, why didn't I win? I said, well, because the other guy got more votes. Uh, and... Uh, uh, and when I got home that night, uh, the night that I checked at the, poll at the polling and I realized I was not going to win, I felt kind of relieved because I knew, one, I had done everything I could possibly do. I had answered every question. I had not ducked a question. Uh, Jack McDowell and, and Sally Beller were both were on the Planning Commission, and they, were, they found it convenient at times to, to say, well, gee, we can't discuss that because it's going to be coming up, blah, 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 blah. But I, w I didn't have that position, and, and I, I answered everything, and, uh, and I lost, and that was okay. Uh, there had been a, a whispering campaign. Before, when the campaign began, I'd read in, in the Daily Pilot that one candidate was, was saying something about another candidate uh, in, in a kind of undercover way uh, to, to bring that candidate down. And I thought, oh, poor Howard Dawson. Uh, uh, Howard Dawson had been publicly a, a, an alcoholic, a drunk. Uh, he had appeared before our uh, Board of Adjustment once, uh, wanting something to, to add to his house, and he stood there slack-jawed, unable to talk. And I said, uh, why don't we continue this, and, and next week uh, Howard or, or somebody can speak for him. And his wife came the next week, Alice came the next week, spoke for him. And I don't think uh, Howard ever had another drink. Uh, but. I thought, oh, well, they, they, they found this about ha Howard, and so that, that's this whispering campaign. And then there were nine of us running for two seats. Uh, and then there were four real candidates, and then five also-rans. And one of the also-rans was a guy, was a gay guy. And I thought, oh, well, when, when it, when maybe, it was, maybe it wasn't Howard, maybe it's this, this gay guy that, that they're going to uh, unveil as, as being gay. Because that, that would have been tough. It was me. I, I, I had no idea. I went to a Chamber of Commerce uh, forum, and I, I sat next to a guy from the pilot, uh, and uh, a, somebody from the audience asked the question of me, what would I do if, 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 uh, if I knew of somebody who's, who 
they committed some kind of heinous crime, an assault, a rape, a child molest, something like that. But would I go to the as the chief of police and and try to get a, try to help him? I said, well, first of all, you don't go to the chief of police. That's one thing. Chief of police was a he had his name, but he was he looked like a Chicago Bear linebacker. He was he was eight, and uh, you didn't go. You went to you went to the police chief hat in hand. Uh, so I said, but but, uh, but why would I even be interested in trying to help somebody who committed a heinous crime like that? And this guy just quit asking the questions. Uh, but I said to the I, oh the the guy from the pilot said to me, did you know what that was all about? I said no. He said he works for Jack McDowell's campaign, and they have you down as having been arrested and convicted of a some kind of crime or other. I said what? Yeah, he told. I said, "Well, didn't anybody ever look up the record or anything?" He said, "Well, he said he he personally did. He went to the police department, and he asked about it, and they said, no, there's no such record. There's nothing. That, you know, it's nonsense." And so he went back to the McDowell campaign and said, "The uh, police department says that the Haino has never done any of these things. None of it." And they said, "Oh well, Haino's friends on the police department have burned the records." So not only am I getting smeared, but then the police department is getting smeared. I went home to Bonnie, and I said, what do we do? I, I told her about it, I, and we wondered whether we should have it called a press conference. And then we thought, press conference, the headline would be, Haino denies a, 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 he's a felon. Haino denies sex offense. Haino denies the, the, the... And we thought, you know, that, that, would finish, that would finish the campaign. There'd be no way I could possibly win by... That sort of thing. <clears throat> so we decided, since I had been ahead in the polls, uh, we might still make it, but we didn't. But I think that's why we didn't make it. And, uh, oh, I, oh I, saw, I saw Jack McDowell a couple of weeks later after the election, and I said, Jack, I, I wanted to talk to you. And he was very uneasy. We sat down, and we had coffee, and I said, you know, you, you spread that lie about me. He said, oh, I didn't do that. He said, other I said, it was your campaign. You take responsibility. You, I said, I want an apology, face-to-face -face apology from you right now. So I kind of gulped and said, I apologize, it was wrong. So I walked away, made him pay for the, for the coffee. Uh, so so that, that, was, that was that, but I, if I had won, would I, I don't know. I don't know that I would have been a very good council member. I'm to think about it. Anyway, so more or less. Uh, if you uh, have uh, It Takes a Villager, Arnold Haino uh, will probably be willing to uh, sign it for you. For $15. Uh, all, <laughs> all proceeds go to uh, Village uh, Laguna. I get, no, I, get, I, get none of, I get nothing. You get your books. fair share. Yes. Um, I, 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 I don't even get free books. I, I get nothing. So uh, why don't you position yourself down here and uh, uh, sign can, uh, can, some can, books and uh, join me in thanking Arnold yes, Haino. Please.